Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got an unboxing today. My shipment from White Mountain Knives has arrived, and so I've got a number of knives in there to get to. But before I get to that, I want to talk about this just a little bit. I'm going to be doing a full review of this, but I needed to just do an update. I got this a, a little while ago, and I did the unboxing for it. And uh, this thing, this piece of leather, um, I'll put the name of the company on screen. Popov, I believe it is. I keep getting those names, brand names wrong. Uh, they sent this to me to review, and I ended up going for the uh, 8103 by San Ren Mew. I had the 7010 in here for a while, and uh, this guy's just a little bit bigger, and it fits in there with just a little bit peeking out, and it's perfect. Makes it easy to grab to pull it out, and uh, use the knife. The thumb studs on these are just a little bit smaller than I'd like. 8103 is the perfect size for in there and it's a beautiful knife and uh, you can tell my piece of leather is starting to get the patina in there and I used to have and I gave it away not too long ago a small Fura brand titanium tactical pen and that would have been perfect in here. I think I gave it away. I might have misplaced it. If I gave it to you, uh, let me know or sold it to you. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I can't remember why. I can't remember what I did with it. Uh, because if I still have it, that's a perfect thing for in here. Like a small tactical pen would be just great for this thing. And it carries so well in my pocket, in my jeans and in other pants. Love this thing. But I'll do a full review uh, in the future. Not sure exactly when. Let's get to that unboxing. And I'm going to use this knife to get in there. Okay, well, I've got the box upside down so that I won't be showing off my address and things. If you do want to send me something, and a lot of people have sent me stuff, just email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com, and I will gladly accept anything. And if it's a knife that you want me to do a review of, it needs to be in close to new condition, or brand new condition, of course, because that's only fair to the manufacturer instead of a well-used knife. I might do like an overview video of something that's well-used. So let's see what we've got here. From just looking at this, you see Best Tech, Kershaw, Cold Steel, and San Ren Mew. So let's get at it. Let's grab one of these Kershaws first. What do we got here? I don't review a lot of Kershaw knives, and that's because I found that the low budget Kershaws tend to be not quite the quality I want for the price I have to pay quite often. But I decided I want to review a couple of these anyway. And uh, maybe you're familiar with this guy. This is the Fraction 11600L. So we've got a hollow grind on here. Oh, let's get it to focus back down here again. It comes with a hollow grind, a clip point. <laughs> I like the design of the blade very much. Uh, Anzo design, which I tend to like as well. And it's a little bit smaller. Liner lock and flipper, you know, action's just great on this thing. Uh, carbon fiber laminate on there, right and left pocket clip. I don't like uh, Kershaw's pocket clips that much. I figure if they're going to make a pocket clip like that, they might as well put a deep carry pocket clip on there. And the thing is, you can put a lot of deep carry clips on here because of the way it's designed. You could swap out the clips very easily. So nice little liner lock. And we'll be talking about this guy before too terribly long. 8CR13 MOV steel on there. And uh, fairly thin behind the grind. I can see right away, I don't like the sharpener's trial on here. You can see the sharpener's trial. They make something like one but it terminates before the blade is down to the thickness that they want of the edge. Silly, silly little things like that are some of the reasons why I don't like certain brands. And of course, I've seen other knives, other brands that do the same thing, so it's not unique to Kershaw at all. Since we're talking about Kershaw, let's take a look here at the Antic now. That's the 8710. And... Uh, 
I get my fingernails in here to do this, to pull this tab out, and I so often get myself tiny little paper cuts or things that I tend to use a knife to do that instead. And this guy is fairly new, I think. You got that big hole back here, you got a pry bar here, you can also use it as a bottle opener, and nice short knife here, 8CR13 MOV as well, and this is a hollow grind too, frame lock, and the pocket clip is just this tip down pocket clip right there. But this is also one that would be great to stuff in a pocket or something. You know, something like this might actually fit in here as well. Oh yeah, that would fit in there very nicely. You know, if you take the pocket clip off. So there you go. Put that over here. I know it's not focused right now, but then I gotta refocus it when I do the next thing. So hang on. Cold Steel Pro Light with the clip. Clip point, I mean, not with a clip. I'm sure it has a pocket clip, but it's the clip point version. In blue. I like cold steel. I like the triad lock. Uh, I'm not a fanatic about the triad lock. Like I'm not one of those guys who'll be engage in an argument about how awesome it is compared to everything else in the world, but it is a good lock. Uh, their sharpener style is done perfectly, and uh, you can get them in different styles of blade here, not just the clip point. And this is also, is that a hollow grind? I forget. Let me get a straight edge and put it on there. Yep, it's a hollow. And uh, I like back lock knives as well. This is something that's really easy to carry and um, you know, having a knife that's not super fast to open and things tends to be a little bit easier to carry in Canada if you're going to have, uh, you know, some official want to check out your knife and uh, decide if it's legal or not for you to carry it. Let's focus down here a little bit more where the whole thing's visible. So there you go. Look at that. It's a beautiful knife and uh, I think it's a pretty good size. It's um, for a full size knife. It's right on. I don't like things too much smaller than this. You know, like this uh, faction, it might be a little bit small for me. My pinky doesn't always get on there. So this would be more of a secondary carry for me. I often carry two knives and this would be around the small end of a primary carry where I've got all four fingers locked in the handle. So we'll be doing a review of this guy as well. And let's talk about best tech maybe. This is the BG05C1. And I don't memorize the numbers. Yeah, see, that bugged my nail right there. Well, not my nail. Uh, whatever the different parts of your nails are called. I don't know all the names of my parts of my nails. Uh, this is the scimitar. I like how they put the name on the blade. I like that. And I like that kind of shape, although it's not really all that upswept. Let's see here, we've got a straight edge. I did this uh, review very recently with my um, making the strop. And this is what it looks like now when it's dried. If you take a look at the knife like this, and you put it on this straight edge, it's not really upswept. It's just made to look upswept. And that's by, you know, diving down here. The ramp, there's a ramp up and then it dives down the swedge and the fuller. It looks very upswept, but nice high flat grind. You know, functionally a full flat grind basically and uh, very comfortable in hand. And I do like this light brown color. Some guys don't like it at all, but I do like this color quite a lot. Let's get this to refocus again. Pocket clip is uh, a nice deep carry pocket clip one side only, and it's one of those angled ones. If they were to make two pocket clips, they'd have to make, I mean, if they were to make the pocket clips on both sides, they'd have to make two of them. Uh, but Because this one's very much made specifically only for this side. But nice and deep carry. Yeah, it feels like it's got good spring to it. A little bit of skeletonizing in there. And uh, this liner lock looks and feels uh, pretty good. This guy's been out for a while. And uh, let's change this up just a little bit so I can get that in the picture. There we go. And San Ren Mu SRM. Uh, they've now, they started branding some SRM knives. And here it says SRM knives and tools. Uh, this is branding for English speaking people, English speaking customers. Uh, instead of just calling it San Ren Mu, because San Ren Mu, you know, I guess they felt like it didn't sound Western enough. So they've gone with SRM. And I like their logo, and this guy I've been wanting for a while. Um, 
14C28 and steel. This is the 1006 or 1006, whichever way you want to call it. So it's got a nice drop point, nice big belly, a little bit of recurve. And you know, this is one of those chunky knives that's ready for some hard work. And it really feels like it too. Two-tone G10, well, three-tone really. You've got that reddish and you got black layer and an orange layer and it sort of, it all looks really, really good. But there you go, beautiful knife. And uh, you can rotate this pocket clip to either side. It's attached on the end, glass breaker. You could put just a regular screw head, a screw on there with a regular head if you didn't want the glass breaker. Lanyard hole placement's quite good, but I'm not doing a full review right now. High flat grind, and I like 14C28M quite a lot. And this thing weighs, it feels good. Its weight feels very good in hand. Yeah, I like this. What else do we have? Well, we've got another Best Tech knife. This is the BG13A2. Here we go. Check that out, the Paladin. And uh, this is a beautiful knife, and I decided to get it for one for myself, D2 steel and um, high flat grind. And the handle's very comfortable, sharpness choil, Looks really cool, but it's totally functional the way they made that sharpness trial. Uh, you can even get your tip of your finger in here if you need to, uh, but it's a risky thing that you might nick the in inside of your finger if you do that, or the outside of your finger. So comfortable in hand. I like the jimping on it. And finally, Savivi. And I like Savivi knives. I like them a lot. Well, I like almost any knife, to be honest with you. Not just almost any knife. I've hardly ever met a knife I didn't like. The only things I don't like about knives sometimes are either the they use garbage materials. No, I don't like that. And I don't like when they use shoddy workmanship. Other than that, styling of knives, almost any knife is a beautiful knife to me. Design, a lot of designs are beautiful in my opinion. And this guy has been getting videos recently and reviews uh, recently and different perspectives and ideas. And some people love it, some people hate it, some people, you know, got different ideas about it. I've heard a few perspectives about this, but I haven't even watched a complete review video on it. And uh, let me tell you why, and that will be the ending of this video. I don't like to watch reviews of videos of knives that I'm going to review. Uh, the main reason is I don't want their opinions to color my thoughts. I want, to create, I want to create my own thoughts. So very often I will do a review, I'll uh, check out the knife, I'll play with it, I'll use it, I'll do some hard use, I'll carry it for a while. I have, I have to carry every knife. On average I've probably got about six videos a week coming out but they're not all knife reviews. I, I like to carry a knife for at least one full day and I record my review. Sometimes while I'm editing, I'll watch a, a review of the knife. Most often it's after I'm done my editing and everything. Then I'll watch somebody else's review of it uh, just to then get an idea. Well, what did they find? What did they conclude? And I don't watch them ahead of time because yeah, I don't want, like I said, their opinion to color it. A uh, pocket clip, deep carry right or left. It's got that carbon fiber laminate, you know, very much like the carbon fiber laminate that uh, the this Kershaw has. Um, it's not the exact same carbon fiber. It looks a bit different one from the other, but same same idea. Flat G10 with carbon fiber glued to it, and uh, I like this brownish look again. It's a bit different than the Best Tech brown or cream color. It's a little darker, and. Uh, High full flat grind, I like that, sort of a clip point. And it promises to be a fairly good slicer, I think, because uh, it's pretty thin behind the grind. Very light as well. And uh, obviously it's got ball bearings. So here's, how many knives did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different knives, seven different knives from White Mountain Knives. A big thank you to Justin over at White Mountain Knives. Thank you so much for getting these knives to me. 
Coupon code CCE if you want to buy something at White Mountain Knives and get 10% off for yourself. And that's anything at White Mountain Knives, I think. Um, you don't have to buy these knives or one of these ones to use that coupon code. You can buy anything you want. So please do use those coupon codes. It does help me out. Justin gives me a special reviewer price on these. He's in business to make money. He's not in business to help reviewers get free stuff. Uh, that just doesn't exist. There's nobody who does that. So Justin wants to earn a living from his business. Uh, you know, he owns White Mountain Knives. He ships to Canada every single time I've ordered from him. I ordered directly that he ships directly to Canada instead of shipping it to my friend in Nebraska first. And every package has come through. So if you're in Canada, I cannot guarantee that CBSA won't intercept a package from Justin at White Mountain Knives, but the odds obviously are very low. So, And uh, we've got a wide variety of different types of things here. Which one of these do you want to see the review of first? I might not follow your choice, but who knows? I might. And guys, just before I'm done for the day, I am helping my you know, son and daughter and his girlfriend move. Um, they've got most of the stuff at their place, but whenever you get to a new place, you need all kinds of things done. I'm building a gate for my uh, daughter's dog just so he'll stay in a certain part of the house. And so that's taking up some of my time. So this week, I won't have an awful lot of reviews, but I will have several videos for you guys to see. Like I just published the one about making this strop. I do like these paddle straps. It's a really good idea to make them and have one for yourself and uh, other ideas for strapping there. And now this unboxing and uh, I'll just do the best I can to get you the reviews in a timely way. Thank you so much everybody for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. You see, Bandit agrees. <laughs>